Welcome to this tutorial and what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial is extracting the, the subject from the background and we're actually going to create a blur on the background but we're going to do it in a way where we actually do it in steps so parts of the background will have more blur than the other so the top part of the image will be really blurred out and the lower part of the image will have less of a blur and we're going to learn how to do that now to extract this subject from from the background now there's lots of different ways of making selections and there's all different ones for, for different images but what we want to look at this is what's going to be best to extract this image um, this foreground from the background and if we look with this photo something really nice about it is the background is already diffused it's all out of focus uh, and the foreground is fairly sharply in focus so for that reason I'm going to be using the focus as a method of selection so to do that I go to select on the menu and I go to focus area so we click there and then you get this box and basically what I would say is just let it do its magic it selects an area uh, and it's not done too bad on that because so you can see we've got most of the area there's a little part missing on the on the wing um, so you can see around around the area of the wing there the dot on the wing is missing got part of the wing missing on the right hand side of the butterfly we've got areas in between the flower in this region um, the where the background hasn't been extracted so what we do now is we use this box to touch the image up and to take away these things or to add the things that are missing and um, to do that first of all I'm going to click on the magnifying glass on this box I'm just going to zoom in to this area there we are so I can see we're missing a few little areas there so what I'm going to do is to click on these two buttons you've got plus and minus so that will add to the selection I'm going to click on that and I'm going to get the easy parts first you can resize the brush uh, using the bracket keys on the keyboard the parenthesis bracket keys which are to the left of the enter key and by using the one on the left it will make the brush bigger the one on the right sorry will make the brush bigger the one on the left will make it smaller so you can adjust that and we just drag over that area and you can see now it's selected that area now sometimes you can drag sometimes you can just click I can see there's a little bit missing at the top of the wing here so I'm just going to click one at a time and just add that area so I'm only clicking once and the reason for that is if I make a mistake and it selects too much then I'll just press uh, command Z on my Mac or Alt Mac on your PC and it will undo or go to edit undo and it will undo that selection so this bit's missing so I'm going to do that so you see this is a really great method of selecting something where you've got an image like this where the majority is in focus now we've got the antenna that's going to be a little bit trickier so I'm going to take down the size of the brush I'm just going to click drag that area there and it's selected that nice I'm going to come along the antenna remember you can use a zoom tool to zoom in so I'm going to zoom in even more on this so I can see what I'm doing click on the plus again I can resize the brush if I need to using the parenthesis keys and I'm just dragging along this area but see what if it picks up other areas to start with so we'll take that out after There's a bit here, I'm just going to add that bit there. 
OK. And then I'm going to click on the minus and I'm going to go back over these areas. Just click on, on the edge of this green just to take that out. Do as much as I can. Like this first. Again, I can click on the plus, bring that back in. Just start first. I'm just getting these main areas. I'm not going to worry too much at this stage. It's pointing too much, but I'm not bothered. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the minus. I'm going to click on these green areas. I'm just dragging across that area. You don't have to go over all of it, you just click on the green areas. It should take out the majority. I'm not too bothered if I just got little bits because really I can. Uh, I mean, because I'm using the background, not replacing the background, some of those colours won't hurt. If I've got a little bit of green here and there, it's not going to be too detrimental to the image. And you can be a lot more fussy than me. I'm just uh, giving you the technique as such. It can take a little bit longer. And all the down the space car, uh, sorry, the, the space bar allows you to move around the image. If you have the space bar down, you see you get the hand tool and that allows you to drag, and then you can reuse the tool. That's so doing a fairly reasonable job. Now, in this case, I say it doesn't matter too much, I'm going to be too critical. Let's just uh, we'll click on that hand tool and take it out. I haven't got to be too critical. As long as I've got what I require, the background matter, it doesn't matter if I've got a little few areas of the background because I'm going to be using the same background, so the colours basically are going to be the same. They shouldn't show up too much. We've also got, uh, we will have the output, so that's important. When we output, we'll output to a new layer with a layer mask. So you can make sure you choose that. So I'll click on OK. And there's the selection. OK. Let's just very quickly have a quick look at this. Now I could use select a mask and touch that up. Uh, it's not too bad, I can do that probably after. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to hide this layer. Click on the eye, so basically we've got nothing. Bring the background back on, if it's not being displayed. Right click on the background and duplicate the background once. So now we're working on this top layer. 
and just double click the hand tool so that you see all the image so what I'm going to do now is on this layer I'm going to delete the area that we actually want I'm going to delete the butterfly and to do that I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to draw very loosely with a feather if you just, uh, I just undo that make sure the feather set to zero up there and I'm just going to draw very loosely around the subject fairly close but it hasn't got to be bang on You know, I'll actually uh, use this so it's subtract from the selection button and I'll just take out that little bit so just a little bit like that any big areas I'll just get rid of you don't want to be too close um, to the actual subject but leaving a bit in We'll make an easier job and I'll show you now what we're going to do we're going to hold down the shift key hold down the shift key on the keyboard and press the backspace key and that will bring up this fill box and make sure that on the content you select content aware make sure that the modes are normal opacity 100% and click on OK and what this will do is try and delete and fill in that area so it takes a little while, it's thinking about it, and there we go, and it's made a really nice job. So now I'll go to select, deselect to take that selection off, and I'm just going to get rid of any other unwanted areas. So I'm not keen on this here because that will distract. Um, so I need to click on add there. Those two areas there will. They don't look too nice, so I'm going to do again. Hold down the shift key, backspace, click on OK. And once again, it will delete those areas. Now these areas haven't got to be perfect because remember, we're going to be blurring them, and some of them you won't see, like this area around here, you won't see that because the butterfly will be over the top of that. When we put the butterfly back on, there you go, you can see it's putting it back onto the background. It's not really changed anything as yet. Okay, so the next stage, I want to duplicate. I'll just hide this again so it doesn't cause any confusion. We're on background copy two. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to blur this layer. So I'm going to filter. Blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur it. Let's just take it all the way down. So that's the original. I'm going to add slight blur. So I'm probably going to take it up to about that amount. That's going to be the first region of blur that I want. So I'll click on OK. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add a mask to this. So if we look at the layers palette, at the bottom of the layers palette, that is our mask. So when I click that button, we now get this white mask. Now remember that white means that the mask is opaque. So in other words, you can't see anything below there. It's completely filling what's underneath it. If it was black, it would look like that. It would show the actual image underneath. So I'll just click the eye back on there, which does the same thing. So what we're going to do with this is, I want it softer at the top, and I want the bottom to show through. So remember black and white. So if it's white, this area, this layer will remain if it's black it will disappear and i will be able to see underneath so on this layer mask make sure i've clicked on that to select it 
I'll make sure that I've got black and white selected on the left hand side. So white and black. If you click on this little button there, that will give you the default colors. You can use this to twist it around, the little boomerang arrow there. So I've got white on top and black on the bottom. So remember, white is opaque. Then I use the gradient tool. Click on the gradient tool and make sure that the selection for there is white to black. That's important. And we need to make sure that this one is clicked on there, which is linear gradient. Okay. So remember, we're going white to black. So I'll start at the top. I'll drag down and I'll let go. And that paints the mask. You can see there. If I just hide this layer, you can see what it's doing. It's soft at the top and then it's merging with what's underneath. So we've got a slight blur there. I might bring it down just a little bit more. So I'm going to drag again. Okay, so there we got. You can see the white and the black there. So a little bit more slight now. Okay, so what we're now going to do is to right click on this layer and duplicate that one. Won't look any different. But what we're now going to do is to blur this again. So I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag this up quite high. So you've got this effect. Click on OK. Now that doesn't look too good now because there's too much blur, too much difference between the top and the bottom. But remember we've got a mask on here, so if I click on the mask, and again I've still got the gradient tool on, I can go up a bit higher and drag, I drag down, you can see from wherever I drag, will lessen the effect, the gradient. So you only drag down so far, if you drag down just a little bit, it's harsh. If you drag down lower, you get that softness coming in. So on the top you've got this layer, underneath it you've got that, underneath that you've got that, and then the original image. Okay, so let's put all these back on. I'll probably bring that just a little bit, yeah. Make sure I click on back on the, the mask there. Okay, so that's better. Okay, I'm liking that. So I'm just going to click to put the top layer back on now. You can see that's affecting the picture. So we've got this blur now. And it goes in various stages. Now this image has already got a slightly blurred background, but you can see the effect that you can get. It will give to other images where you've got more in focus, it will give a 3D effect really to your image. You've got that nice fading off of the background rather than all the background being faded out. But you've still got those options of, of doing that because you can just paint any of those in fully on the mask. So let's say I wanted it all blurred like the top, then I would simply um, use the gradient tool and just come straight down the bottom. Just like that. So that gives you a totally blurred effect. Or I can drag and add the blur that I want. So three different blurs just to give that effect of fading out gradually. Okay, so I hope that's learnt you something and um, something to practice on your own images. Because we actually deleted that background, if you wasn't happy with the position of the, the butterfly, we could click there and we could use the move tool and move it slightly. Because we deleted The butterfly from the background, we're able to do that. If we haven't deleted that, 
then you wouldn't be able to do this. Okay, so you could also resize it and make it larger. So I'm holding down the shift key, making it slightly larger. We wouldn't go too much. So there we go. Flatten the image layer, flatten the image, and there's a completed picture.